Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to really dig into how we can utilize variables and tie them into the widgets that we're going to be using in our applications. So there are different variable types that we need to know about. We need to know how to read and write from them, and we want to know how to observe them because that allows us to build some really, really neat functionality and do things that we otherwise wouldn't be able to do. So digging into our variable types, we have four main variable types that we're going to be using. It's going to be based off of the class from the TK enter module. So we'll have string var, int var, double var, which is going to be our floats and bool var. And they all have default values of empty string, zero, zero, point zero, and false. These are going to be the things that we initialize and then we tie them into our widget. We're usually not going to just pass in a literal value or a variable that we created that is like my var equals one, because we'll have no way of ever changing that with relation to what is being displayed inside of the widget. So here's an example of what it looks like to read and write some of these values. So we're going to initialize a variable. And you might notice here that we do still have to pass something in. And that's going to be the application that we're working off of. So this is going to be our master. And that's almost always going to be our root in this case, or app or window or whatever we decide to call it, but we're going to have to pass that in. And then from there, we will call the get and set methods. So if we call get on an int var that is was created just using the master value that you pass to it, you'll get a zero, then we can set it to something else. And you'll notice here that we're setting it to a 1.0. And then when we call get, it gets converted into a one. And that actually does happen when you call get, it doesn't get converted when you're setting it. So that's one thing that we're going to need to be looking out for. The other thing that we're going to be using, and this is a little bit more advanced thing here, is all of these variables have a trace function that we can call on them, or method rather. And we can specify the mode or the thing that we want to trace. So in this case, the reading mode is going to be just a string with a lowercase r in it. And then we will specify a function that we want to handle and execute. So it's going to be called a callback function. when this variable gets read. So if something ever calls dot get on our my var in this case, it's going to execute var read. Similarly, we can go down the route of writing things, and that's going to be tracing on the w mode. And then when something calls set on our variable, then this is going to be triggered. So these are the things that we're going to be utilizing. And we're going to do this by just adding functionality to the temperature calculator that we worked on from the previous lesson. So before we get too far adding things into our application, I do just want to open up a REPL here. And we can actually work with tkinter from within our REPL. So if we create a root tk tk, that is actually going to launch a window over here. And we can iterate on things and kind of add them as we go. But the thing I want to talk about here is going to be setting up an integer var here. So we'll do tk int var root. And then I, we already kind of demonstrated that this is going to be a class type object here of an int var. So just looking at it isn't going to give us the actual value for it. We have to call get in order to get that. Similarly, we can do my int set something like a string here. And my int get is going to convert that back into being an integer. But if we do something that isn't valid, like we just know it's never going to convert, like 10 o'clock. Like there's no way to basically cast this using the int class. Notice that it doesn't give us an error when we set it. It's only going to give us an error when we try to access it. And this is important because it's going to dictate when we should be adding error handling to things. So that's important to know. I just wanted to kind of demonstrate this so we could base some of the code that we're going to be writing off of this as we go. But let's go ahead and exit out of here. And we're going to go and close this down. But we're going to utilize variables to hold on to some important things inside of our application, namely the temperature value, the other one being the format, because we need both of those things to actually calculate the final result value that we want to display to the user. Let's go ahead and move up to the top here where we specify master. And we'll do temp value. This is going to be a double var going to be tied to self master. And then you can set a value to it, or it's going to default to zero, zero. I'm just going to be explicit for the time being, but we're setting it to what, what would be the normal default anyway. 
We're going to have a format value. This is going to be an int var. And the reason it's an int var is because ints are easy to use for enumeration, where you only have a few options and you know what those options are. And we're just going to default this to zero. We basically have a zero and a one for Celsius versus Fahrenheit here. And now we're going to take these and we're going to utilize them in the widgets that would actually modify them. So we're going to come down to our temp entry and there's a value here that is text variable. And we can set this to self temp val. And now every time we type into our entry field, it's going to call set on the temp val variable, which is pretty neat, really. Notice that it says text variable, but then we're accessing a double variable up here. Like that's going to be the thing that we're passing in. And that's important because that means we can type some random string into this entry. But when we call get later on to access the temp value, it has the potential of throwing an error. So we need to add some error handling at that time. Next up, we're going to be needing to use our format value, and we'll do that with our radio buttons. So down here, we have text of Celsius. We can set a variable behind this. That's going to be self format value. And then we can set what the value of this field is. So when this field is checked, this is the value it's going to set to the variable. So this is going to be our zero value. And then for Fahrenheit down here, we're going to do variable oops, equals self format value. And then the value here is going to be one. And the other thing that this lets us do is it lets these two radio buttons be tied together. So if the value of format value is zero, then this radio button is going to be the one that's checked. But if the value is one, then it won't be checked. So that's what gives us the information that ties them together and they know whether or not they should be checked. They don't know of the other one. They only know of this variable and the value that they should mark themselves as checked for. But it does give you the illusion that they're tied together and know of each other in some way, even though they don't. So just for the time being, let's go ahead and come down to our results label here and actually change this from being text of nothing to text variable equals self temp value. And we'll go ahead and save. That's not going to be the final thing that we do, but it will allow us to see that we are modifying things pretty easily. So just booting up the application here, you can see that it is 0.0, .0 right away. And as I back off and change things, it's immediately updating itself. So this is reactive right now. And that is exceptionally neat because we didn't really have to write any code. We just created an object and marked that one label is going to be backed by a variable. And this entry is also going to be backed by the variable. So if the variable changes, everything that is using it needs to be changed too. So that's pretty neat. We're going to change this because we want to actually run some code when we hit calculate. And that will change the value down here. But I just wanted to demonstrate that even though we didn't do anything with our entry to say, hey, go ahead and set this when I type or whatever, it's going to automatically do that just by default. That's how the text variable field on an entry works. Let's go ahead and close this. And over here, let's go ahead and close that thing back out. And what we're going to do now is actually work on calculating the value, which means we need to tie a command to calculate here. Let's come up here and we'll call this command self convert temp. And then we're also going to remove this text variable from our results. In fact, we don't need to give it anything because by default, it's just going to have no text. Now we'll come down here and create another method that is called convert temp. It doesn't need any arguments right now. But we know that we need to read the temperature value so we can do some math with it. And that is going to be something that can give us some errors. Let me move this a little so it's easier to see. So we'll do input value equals self temp value get, because if somebody just types in a random string, this is going to raise an exception. That exception is going to be a TK TCL error. And in that case, we'll do self results. We'll just set the text equal to invalid temperature value. Otherwise, we're going to say if self format value get is zero, then we know that it's something that we should convert to Celsius. Otherwise, let me scroll down some more. 
we're going to want to convert this to Fahrenheit. So we'll do convert to Fahrenheit. And for this, we'll do self results text equals. We'll use an F string here, and then it's going to be round input value times 9 divided by 5 plus 32. And we will round on two decimals here and close that off. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a degree in here. I don't know how to do this on every operating system. On a Mac, it is going to be option 0. We'll add that for you. Then we're going to take this same thing here. And instead of using the conversion to go to Fahrenheit, we're just going to convert to Celsius. So that's going to be input value minus 32 times 5 divided by 9. And we'll change our F to a C. And now we're ready to save. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal again and rerun this. Mm, I'm missing something here. Oh, I added an extra parenthesis right there, but I was missing the original. There we go. That should be better. Now we can run this, and by default here, we can say, okay, zero degrees Fahrenheit is what in Celsius? It's going to be a negative 1778. What if it's zero degrees Celsius? We want to go to Fahrenheit. That's going to be 32 degrees on the nose. So we've successfully implemented our application so that it can do the temperature conversion. And for the most part, all this really required us to learn, besides how to lay out all these widgets, was the value that we can get from using these mutable variables that hold on to our variables that we input into our widgets. So we've successfully created an application that really does something, and that's something we can pat ourselves on the back for. I do want to show you something else that I think is just incredibly neat and powerful. So let's go ahead and make a copy of this. We'll do temp calculator, and let's create temp calculator reactive.py. Let's go ahead and open that file up. So the reason we wanted to make a copy is we're not going to continue to work with this version of it, but I wanted to show you what it would be like if we just were always calculating the new value. So the first thing that we're going to do is have another variable here that is the result value. This is going to be a string var. That is tied to self master here. And then we want to trace the temperature value and the format value. So if either of these are written to, then we want to recalculate the temperature and we want to write that out to the results value. So we'll do self temp, whoops, temp value trace w. And we're still going to call convert temp, but we will have to modify this a little bit. And then format value trace on right self convert temp. Now we'll move down to our results. We can actually completely remove the button. We don't even need it anymore. But we're going to set this to have a text value now. So it's going to have a text variable behind it that is going to be the result value. And then the last thing we want to do here is we actually just want to call self convert temp just to calculate the initial temperature. And we will need to come down here and just make sure that this can handle any arguments that get passed to it, even if we aren't accepting any. That is an important thing to note there. But now, instead of doing self results text everywhere, what we're going to do is we're going to do results value set. So we'll do results set, and then basically just pass it the exact same string that we were just doing. So this will be results value or result value set and the same thing here there we go now if we save and we go ahead and we run python temp calculator reactive.py it's going to look a little bit different for us but notice what happens here i'm going to go and change the backing variable here by clicking fahrenheit and it's going to automatically recalculate and change what's here then I can come up here and I could say, oh, what if it's 1? What if it's 12? What if it's 122? And it's going to set that value. But then if I make it something that's invalid, 
like o'clock again, right? It's going to immediately go back to saying it's an invalid temperature value because we have that error handling. But this is reactive programming inside of our GUIs, and I think this is just awesome. Like it's it's one of the neater things we can do with a GUI is just make it to where it just automatically does things. And I think this is something that's well worth understanding how it works because it's really the power of tracing the values that are inside of our variables. So that's that. We're not going to mess with this particular file anymore. You can move it and just keep it for your own record. We will continue to iterate on temperature calculator here. So temp calculator we will be working with. And I do want to review kind of what we did here. We created some variables that are tied to our, our master TK object here. And then we use those so that we could extract information out of our widgets whenever our user interacts with them. And that's done through passing them into widgets using the various named parameters that we have. So text variable is one that's commonly used. Otherwise, for radio button, it's going to be just variable. And then we were able to add some error handling to handle when things go bad and still manage to change things. And then eventually we went on to talk about tracing. But variables are really, really powerful, and they're really simple. We only have to think about a few different methods that are on those objects. But it's important to know that this is how the data actually flows through our application. It's by setting and getting values from variables.